Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law states that the pressure times the volume of a gas should equal the number of moles of a gas times the temperature of the gas times some sort of constant here or the universal gas law constant in this case. Okay, so when we work with the ideal gas law, we're working with gas law problems that involve the pressure of a gas, the volume of a gas, the number of moles of gas, and the temperature of gas. And when we're working with the ideal gas law, we should always be working with uh, the pressure units in atmospheres, the volume units in liters, N stands for the number of moles of gas, and the temperature should always be in Kelvin. Last but not least, we have R. R here is known as the universal gas law constant, and it's always the same. R is always going to be equal to 0 0.0821, liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Now this is a pretty funky little unit of measurement here, but what this unit of measurement allows us to do is it allows us to cancel out these units of measurement right here for pressure, atmospheres, these units of measurement for liter or for volume right here, liters, and it allows us to cancel out moles and it allows us to cancel out Kelvin later on when we're working with the, the actual formula during a mathematical calculation. So let's take a look at an example here. In this example here, we have four different containers, and each one of these containers is filled with uh, some gas particles. And in each one of these containers, there's an unknown variable. For example, in this container right here, uh, the pressure of the gas that's in here is 2.5 atmospheres. It's occupying 100 liters of space, and its temperature here is 300 K. If I were asked to figure out the number of moles of this gas, it would be quite simple. I can simply plug PV and T into the ideal gas law formula, uh, use R, which is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over moles times Kelvin, and bam, you will get your answer for the number of moles of gas that are in this little container. Or what if in this example here, you know the volume of this gas, you know the number of uh, moles of this gas, and you know the temperature of this gas, and you are asked to calculate the pressure of this gas. Well, in this instant here, you can plug these values into the ideal gas law and calculate the pressure of this gas. In this example here, what if you know the pressure of the gas, you know the temperature of the gas, and you know the number of moles of gas, but you are wanting to figure out the volume or how much space this gas takes up. Well, in this instance here, you can plug these uh, variables into the ideal uh, gas law, and you should be able to calculate V no problem. And last but not least, let's suppose you know the pressure, volume, and number of moles of gas, and you want to figure out the temperature of this gas. Once again, we can simply plug this into the ideal gas law, and we should be able to calculate the temperature of the gas. So the ideal gas law allows us to figure out uh, uh, several different variables. We can figure out the pressure of a gas, we can figure out the volume of the gas if we wanted to, we can figure out the temperature of the gas, and we can figure out the number of moles of gas using the ideal gas law formula. Let's take a look here. When we're working with the ideal gas law, you might see from time to time something called STP, or Standard Temperature and Pressure. It says here that STP is a standard set of conditions for exper experimental measurement established to allow comparisons to be made between different sets of data. Basically what STP is, it's a set of conditions that scientists set up years ago, so that way when they were doing their experiments with, with gases, uh, those experimental conditions would be the same between the different sets of experiments. But for what, uh, for purposes of a, of a high school chemistry class, what you need to know is that whenever you see STP, the temperature is always going to be 273, and the pressure is always going to be one atmosphere. Okay, so whenever you see STP, just think the temperature is 273K, and the pressure is going to be one atmosphere. So let's work some problems using the ideal gas law. All right, in this problem it says 10 liters of a gas exerts 2.5 atmospheres of pressure at 200 K. How many moles of gas are there? And we will assume that the gas behaves ideally. Okay, so if we take a look at this problem, it says we've got 10, we have 10 liters of a gas, so this right here is going to be the volume. It says the pressure of the gas is 2.5 atmospheres, so that's going to be the pressure. And it says right here that 200 K is the temperature of this gas. And we are asked to calculate the number of moles of gas there are. So in this problem here, we've got pressure, we've got volume, we've got temperature, and we've got number of moles, or N. 
So what formula do you know uses all those variables? Well, the ideal gas law, PV equals N times R times T. And in this problem here, we're asked to solve for N. So the way that we get N all by itself on one side of this equal sign is to divide both sides by R and T. This will cancel out. And so what we end up with here is N equaling PV over R times T. And in this problem, the pressure is already in atmospheres, the volume is already in liters, the temperature is already in Kelvin. So we can just go ahead and plug these values in. So let's go ahead and do that. The pressure here is 2.5 atmospheres times the volume here, which is 10 liters. And then we're going to end up dividing this all by R, the universal gas law constant, which is 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin times the temperature. The temperature here says it's 200 K and what I like to do is put everything in the denominator in parentheses in my calculator and let's take a look here. So let's get our calculator out and we'll take 2.5 times 10 and then we're going to divide that by 0 0.0821 times 200 and it looks like I end up with 1.523 if I round to the thousands place. So I end up with 1.523. 1.523 what? Well, let's take a look. We have atmospheres on top. Atmospheres on bottom, they cancel. We have liters on top. Liters on bottom, they cancel. We have K on top of here. And we've got K on the bottom. They will cancel, leaving us with moles. So you can see why we use this weird unit of measurement here for the universal gas law constant, or R. This allows us to cancel out these other units of measurement for pressure, for volume, and for temperature. So if we're asked to calculate the number of moles of this gas based on the volume, based on this pressure, and based on this temperature, there we go. The number of moles of this gas is 1.523 moles. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this example, it says if 64 grams of oxygen at 350K exerts 1,520 torres of pressure, then what is its volume? We will assume the gas behaves ideally. So in this problem here, we are asked to calculate volume. What is its volume? So if we want to figure out the volume of this, then we need to know uh, the number of moles, but we don't have the number of moles. We have grams. Well, we should quite easily be able to convert the grams to moles here. The way that we convert grams to moles, if you remember earlier, is dividing by the molar mass of the substance, which in this case is O2. All right, so even though it says 64 grams here, we should be able to get N quite simply. It says it's at 350K, and the pressure is this right here in tors. And we want to figure out the volume. So what formula do we know uses V's, N's, T's, and P's, well, that is going to be the ideal gas law, and we know that PV equals N times R times T, and in this problem here, we're asked to solve for V, so I have to get rid of P from this side of the equation. I divide by both, uh, both sides by P, and the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem is V equaling N times R times T all over P. Okay. Now, before we can just start plugging numbers in, there's a couple of issues. The first issue is that this is in torres. So when we work with the ideal gas law, we're going to want to convert this to atmospheres. And the way that we convert torres to atmospheres is simply to take 1520 and divide it by 760. If we do that, we'll get two atmospheres here. And last but not least, I'm going to have to convert the 64 grams of oxygen to moles. So if I've got 64 grams of oxygen, from earlier this year, we learned that one mole of oxygen is 32 grams of oxygen, right? Two times 16 on the periodic table adds up to 32. And when I take 64 divided by 32, I get two moles. So this is not my answer. This is just what N will end up being. So N is going to be equal to two moles. So now that we have everything ready to go, we can simply plug this into the formula. So V is going to equal N, which we just figured was 2 moles, times R, which is the universal gas law constant, 
0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin times T. The temperature in this problem is 350K. And then we're going to divide this all by the pressure. The pressure here is going to be 2 atm. So we'll take 2 times 0 0.0821 times 350. And we're going to divide this by 2. And we end up with 28.735. 28.735 what? Well, let's take a look here. We have moles on top here, canceling out with moles on bottom. We have Kelvin on bottom, canceling out with the Kelvin on top. We've got ATM on top here. We have ATM on bottom here, leaving us with liters. So the volume of this gas is going to be 28.735 liters. Let's take a look at another example. In this example here, well, let's take a look at this example right here. It says it, six moles, six moles of a gas occupies 20 liters at a pressure of 2.8 atmospheres. What is the gas's temperature? And we're assuming again that the gas behaves ideally. So in this problem here, we've got six moles, that's going to be N occupying this much space that's going to be V at this pressure right here we want to figure out what is it says right here what is the gases temperature so we're trying to figure out the temperature of this gas so in this problem here looks like we're going to be using PV equals NRT again and in this problem here we're asked to solve for T so I have to divide both sides by N and R they will cancel out here and the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem is going to be T equaling PV over N times R. Pressure here is an atmosphere, so we can just plug it right in here. Times the volume, the volume here is 20 liters. And we're gonna end up dividing this all by N, which is six moles. I'll put this in parentheses, times the uh, universal gas law constant. 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. And we'll get our calculator out and we'll take 2.8 times 20 and we're going to divide this by 6 times 0 0.0821 and we end up with 113.683. hundred and thirteen point six eight three what well let's see what cancels out let's see what units cancel out here it looks like we've got atmospheres on top atmospheres on bottom so we got uh, let's see moles here on bottom moles on top they cancel and last but not least we've got liters right here and liters right here that will cancel out leaving us with Kelvin so the temperature of this gas is going to be hundred and thirteen point six eight three Kelvin Let's take a look at one last problem here. Okay, in this problem it says, how much space does one mole of a gas occupy at STP? Okay, so let's take a look here. We've got uh, one mole of a gas, and we want to know how much space it occupies. So uh, we're asked to figure out how much volume this gas is going to occupy at STP. Whenever we see STP, the temperature is always 273K, and the pressure here is always going to be one atmosphere. All right, remember that STP stands for standard temperature of pressure and that the temperature is always 273K and the pressure is always 1 atm. So in this problem here, what formula do we know uses uh, P, V, N, and T? That's going to be the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. So we know that PV equals NRT. And in this problem here, we're asked to solve for V. So we divide both sides by P. P will cancel here and so V looks like V is going to equal NRT all over P and in this problem here we have uh, one mole of gas times the universal gas law constant 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin and then we're going to multiply this by the temperature. The temperature here is 273K. 
and then we're going to end up dividing this by the pressure. The pressure is one atmosphere. And if we put this in our calculator, we will end up with, let's see here, 1 times 0 0.0821 times 273 divided by 1. We end up with 22.413. Alright, 22.413 what? Well, let's take a look. Looks like atmospheres cancels out, moles cancels out. Kelvin cancels out, leaving us with liters. And this number right here is actually a special number. Our answer here is a special number. This right here, this number right here, is known as the molar volume of a gas at STP. What does this mean, people? This means that if you have one mole of any gas at this temperature and at this pressure, I should say one mole of an ideal gas at this temperature right here and at this pressure right here, it will always occupy 22.4 liters. Okay, so if I have one mole of oxygen gas at STP, it will occupy this much space. If I have one mole of nitrogen gas at STP, it will occupy this much space. If I have one mole of water vapor at STP, you guessed it, it will occupy this much space. All right, 22.413 or just 22.4 for short is known as the molar volume of a gas at STP. All right, so once again, if you ever have a gas at this temperature and at this pressure and it's behaving ideally, then it will occupy 22.413 liters. So this is the ideal gas law, and I hope you uh, found this helpful.